Hello, my name is Emily Crow from Crochet Creations, and welcome to my Crochet and Knitting podcast. This is episode nine, which is crazy. We are almost to the double digits, and thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. If you are coming back, I love to see you back here, and for those who are new, I'm so glad that you stumbled upon me and decided to join in. I have seen a lot of growth in my channel. My subscribers have doubled in the past couple weeks, which is really exciting. And so thank you so much for everyone who's here. And if you like this type of content, I like to share about what I'm working on, recent projects I've finished, new yarn, books, supplies that I've gotten, up and coming things happening with my small business crochet creations. And if any of that is something you're interested in for my podcast, then definitely make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification. I do a podcast every other week, and on my off weeks, I have other videos, different yarn vlogs, project vlogs, day in the life vlogs, lots of vlogs. <laughs> but other, you know, tutorials and reviews on different products that are in the realm of yarny things. So I would love to have you come back here for those types of videos as well, because I really enjoy doing a variety like that and I come out with a new video every Friday, so you can see me here then. But let's get started, I guess. First of all, I want to address what's happening in Ukraine right now, and I know that it is leaving a lot of hearts feeling very heavy right now, and whether you are directly impacted being Ukrainian or having loved ones in Ukraine, or if you are just empathizing with the situation going on there. I know that it's really hard. I have all of you in my thoughts and prayers, and I hope that this video can be something lighthearted that you can enjoy watching, but I just want to make sure to acknowledge that. There's lots that we can do, big and small, and so there's so many different ways, but I'll leave a couple links down in the description if there's anything that I feel impressed to share with you for ways to address that. Let's get into kind of big news for Crochet Creations. I have a new pattern that has been released by the time that you are watching this video, my cloverated dishcloth set. I'll keep a picture up right there, including I have a video tutorial for how to create that clover stitch. And so I'll make sure to link that in the cards up above as well as down below. And you'll be able to make this texture which is so fun. Super fun to kind of add in a little something different with your color work in crochet and have a little texture. It's part of a series of dishcloths that I am designing and this one is specific for St. Patrick's Day, which is coming up really quick. So if you're interested in that pattern, make sure to follow my links down below. With no coupon code needed, you can get the pattern for 50% off through St. Patrick's Day, which is March 17th. Thank you everyone who has shown support and excitement about this pattern release so far and super fun. I am looking forward to other dishcloths in this series that I am doing. Oh, and just a reminder, I'll have all the links down in the description if I can fit them all of the patterns I'm making, the yarns I'm using, any specific designers, people or items I mention my social media stuff, all that is in the description, but you can always comment down below if there's something you're interested in and I haven't given you that information, just let me know and I can pass that information forward. But let's get started into our FOs or our finished objects. Okay, so first and foremost, the biggest finished object I have to share with you are my apple socks. Ah! Okay, I only have one on the blocker. I have the other one right here. But they are finally finished. It's a pair of vanilla cuff down shorty socks. If you have been here for the saga, I started them toe up and wasn't liking the fit. So I ripped back, wasn't liking the fit. I bound off, started a second one, and then I ran out of the reinforcement thread to hold double with the contrast color. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm not liking how the one sock is finished. I just started over and it made me so much happier. I like the fit so much better. I got through the project so much faster. I want to try toe up socks again, but I need a little bit of a break. So it was nice to be able to finish these finally. This yarn is Divine Yarns by Monica Grico. It is in their color Basket of Apples. And the contrast color is from Lang Yarns Ja Wool in this fun green color because I wanted to bring out some of the green speckles that are really lightly speckled in this yarn. 
So super fun. I'm really excited to finally have these finished. I think I started in like September. So finally having them completed and I'm happy with them. I am overjoyed. So that is my first big FO. I just powered through and finished those. Another big FO that I finished that I had to power through, my Muscle Burra hat. Ah, yay! So my goal for this hat was to finish with enough time to still wear it when the weather was cooler. I'm in the Bay Area of California and so we don't really get cold winters but sometimes it's really cold in the morning and depending on like the fog and whatnot it can be cold enough to wear a hat and so I wanted to make sure to finish my hat in time to wear it I was talking in my last podcast there was like a storm coming through and so it was gonna cool down for a little bit so that was my goal and you know what I did it I finished this within the week so I was able to wear it for like a day or two <laughs> as it was intended it's a fingering weight hat it's made from Woolberry Fiber Co. in the color of very Woolberry. And so I can wear it, you know, even when it's not super cold outside. And it works great as a slouchy beanie. Yep. Just for, you know, style purposes. And that's great. I did the adult medium. My head size is kind of in between. It's like right on the cusp of adult small and adult medium. I wish I'd done an adult small because I'd like a snugger fit on my hats, but now I know that. And it still totally works for its purposes. I don't think it'll end up being my favorite hat ever, but that's okay. The yarn, it's got this really pretty pale pink and then all sorts of different colored speckles. A lot of brown speckles, but all sorts of colors. When you look really closely, you can see blues, yellows, pinks, greens, all sorts of things. Not gonna be my favorite hat, but it was a good learning experience. I enjoyed working on this pattern, and now I know to do a different size next time. I don't have any plans to make another hat anytime soon. Like I said, it's pretty warm now. It's like in the 70s today, which is so nice. Ah, I miss the warm weather. All of you who are in places that actually get snow are like cursing at me because complaining about the gold here. <laughs> of course, you probably want the warm weather even more than I do right now. <laughs> Won't be my favorite hat. I don't have any plans to make another one <laughs> right now, though I'm pretty sure I will because I enjoyed working on this pattern and it's a great use for fingering weight sock yarn without making socks, but I don't have any specific plans because the weather is getting warm again. So I won't really need a hat for a while. And I have another big FO, an entire project that you haven't seen yet. This is a pattern test for Nitty Natty. So I really admire Nitty Natty and I've followed her on your YouTube. I follow her on YouTube. I follow her on YouTube and on Instagram and she posted this test call for a crochet pattern. It's her playtime cowl, which is so fun. So this worked up so fast. Oh my goodness. It worked up in, let's see, I started Friday evening and I was blocking it Sunday afternoon. So less than a day and a half. Okay, so first of all, fun border stitching. Super subtle, but also has a good texture to it. And it's got some simple stitches in between some really interesting crisscross pattern stitches. And so it was a good mix of mindless crochet, but also really fun. And I really enjoyed learning the new stitches. I did the single loop version. So I ended up using about 65 grams of yarn. Put it on to kind of show you. Mm, I really enjoy it. I'll share the yarn. I use, this is Woolbury Fiber. Again, this is their newest Berry Home Base, which is a non-superwash yarn. This is just fingering weight, 100% non-superwash yarn in the color Darling. Beautiful, beautiful variegation. I really love how it worked up here. So pretty. It's even got some really subtle purpley bits that are a little bit harder to see because there's just so much pink and cream on this, but you can definitely see it really well in person. There's a good chunk right there of the purple. This is really fun. I really enjoyed working with the non superwash yarn. I was worried it would be a little bit more scratchy, but I was pleasantly surprised. It was so, so soft and smooth, but it also felt really structured. And when I made my stitches, they like kind of like got into place really well. It feels really sturdy. My stitches weren't moving around. It was really easy to keep a uh, good tension on my yarn because of the structure of the yarn. It was a really enjoyable experience. I really wanna work with non-super wash wool again, so leave recommendations down below if you know of any dyers or any particular brands of non-super wash wool that you really like. I 
I don't know how I feel about going super rustic yet, but I'm willing to tread in that direction and to kind of dip my toes in the water. So let me know if you have any recommendations for me. This is super fun. Her pattern is designed so that even the double loop version you can do with just a single skein of fingering weight yarn. So keep an eye out for that pattern release. It should be coming up very soon. So super excited that I got to test that pattern for her. I made a custom order headband. Long story short, it was a little bit of a pain for me to try to reverse engineer a headband for my client. And I ended up thankfully finding the pattern on Ravelry so I could just follow it. It was worth spending the money to figure out how to do this pattern because it was knit. It is the Pantomime Flowered Headband by Ellen Rich. I use Loops and Threads Impeccable Yarn in Soft Taupe. I don't have it with me because I already gave it to my client. It was a fun little pattern to work up. I don't know if I'll ever make it again necessarily. I mean I wouldn't be opposed to making it but I don't see myself wearing something like that. It's just like a really big thick headband and I have such a small head. <laughs> so I don't think it would look good on me but maybe maybe for somebody else. I don't know but I'm so glad that I found this pattern and I am really happy that I can support another maker by purchasing it. Finally. Finally, finally, for FOs. I have lots of FOs because I powered through a few and then I had a few other quick things. I made another dishcloth. I have lots to tell about this. So this is gonna be a little bit of a tangent, but I designed this moss stitch on the diagonal dishcloth a month plus ago. I can't remember exactly how many weeks. And my idea was to have this come out as like a spring cleaning type of dishcloth. Super nice drape with the moss stitch. Super nice stretch and super fun to work up. Really simple. I wanted to do maybe another dishcloth design to go with it. And it's this one. <laughs> I haven't woven in my ends yet. Whoops. But instead of using the moss stitch, it's the seed stitch. So it's alternate single crochet and double crochet. And I am not not a super fan of this edging. I've got a little bit more tweaking to do for the pattern, but this is pretty close to what the final rendition will be. But this uh, pattern set will come out in just a week or so. So I'm really excited about that. But the thing I wanna share with you about is that I had posted about the moss stitch dishcloth four or five weeks ago here on YouTube. And I discovered earlier, I think last week, that Amy Kate from the Graceful Tangle had a very, very similar dishcloth design that she had just come up with. That was really disheartening for me as a designer, and I know that this isn't a super novel design. It's moss stitch, it's super common, it's a dishcloth, you know, on the diagonal. I hadn't seen anything previously like this, so that's why I designed it. I thought it would be fun. But then as someone else came up with the idea, like right around the same time as me, and she has way more followers and is very successful as a designer, and so I was bummed out thinking that I wouldn't be able to do this design, but then I came up with a first, like I didn't know what to do. I reached out to her and I definitely encourage anyone who is a designer to reach out to any designers that have something similar to you or, you know, if there's a concern there so that you guys can all be on the same page. We're all about community over competition and supporting one another in our creative endeavors. So I reached out to Amy Kate and she is such a sweet girl and we were able to chat about kind of... <laughs> what we wanted to do about having similar designs. And I'm really grateful for her. She was willing to scrap her design, get rid of her tutorial that she'd already filmed and taken care of. And I didn't want her to, you know, get rid of all that work she'd already put in when she hadn't copied me. We just happened to have a similar idea at the same time. We ended up finding out that there are other <laughs> moss stitch on the diagonal dishcloth designs out there that we hadn't seen previously. I guess all that to say, each of us is unique in our making and our making journey. And even as designers, there's a lot of ways in which different stitches or different styles can overlap. And that's okay. Each of us being a maker makes something, creates something unique. For this design, can hear my baby. For this design, I am still going to publish it, but I'm adding value to this design in its uniqueness. And so I'm not just doing the moss stitch dishcloth, but I'm adding a different dishcloth in a similar style to go with it so that my pattern has added value that makes it unique on the market. And Amy Kate has her 
tutorial her pattern I haven't even looked at it but it looks pretty similar to mine on first glance and and even though it may look similar it's unique in its own way and her design elements and her tutorials are adding value making it worth her putting it on the market and so all that to say I'm really grateful that she was willing to talk about it and kind of figure out what we wanted to do and how we wanted to move forward with these designs so we could be on the same page and support one another and I just want to encourage you that if you feel like what you're putting out into the world is worth putting out into the world then put yourself into it make it unique and make it your own don't be intimidated don't feel like you're an imposter just because you know other people have have vaguely similar ideas to you you know you can't be a hundred percent creative try to do your best to make something that is unique and new and to put that in the world all that to say that each of us is uniquely ourselves as a maker and as a designer and as we put ourselves into our pieces then it is worth having out in the world. You don't have to have something that is 100% different than everything else that you've ever seen in order for it to be an expression of creativity and something worth having out there. I'll link her down below, check out her pattern and her tutorial. We are on the same page, the, our designs are different and we are putting out different patterns into the world to make it worth having those patterns out in the world. All that talk about FOs, let's move into whips. We're gonna talk about my whips that I've got going. I've got quite a few. I think because I was fueled by finishing a few things off, I was kind of in a sock rut because my apple socks were taking so long, even though they're vanilla socks. And so now that those are done, I'm like weight lifted off of me. I'm ready to make some more socks. We'll start off with the least progress. This is my Find Your Fade by Andrew Mowry. I'm using Sorella yarn in her fall tonals from this past year. This is the color ceramic. You're probably wondering, hmm, what progress have you made? Exactly two rows, exactly 10 minutes of knitting that I did the other night, and that's all. So it's pretty pathetic, but I'm showing this so that you can hold me accountable. Oh, there's a cat hair. I'm showing this so you can hold me accountable that I'm going to make more progress on this next time so that I can start to show the next color that it's fading into because I really do want to see it come to life. This is part of my make nine list for this year, my, my main make nine list, which I'll link. I have a few other make nine lists like my stash make nine list and my gift make nine list. So I'll make sure to link those too if I have room in my description and up above. But this is on my main make nine list and so I really want to get this done and to make some progress. My fade goes from this creamy color through a mauve a pinky, warm, brown, purple-y color. So nice. So I'm really excited to see the next colors come up in that. I have another shawl, but this one is a surprise. It's a test knit. And so the best part about this is that I... I'm now a brioche knitter. So fancy. I've wanted to learn brioche. I never had a reason to learn brioche up until now. And then one of my friends, Megan from Knit Curious, had this pattern test. And her big thing with this pattern test, it's called Fortnite. It's the name of the shawl because it's so quick to work up that you can do it in a fortnight. So I kind of wanted to take on the challenge even though I didn't know brioche. So I did. I volunteered for this test. <laughs> Ta-da! Oh, so pretty. Oh my goodness, oops, there's something happening right there. And you know what? I only see one mistake right there. My contrast color, I wrapped it around on accident. And other than that, it looks pretty dang good, I think. Oh, here's the reverse, because you gotta see both sides. Oh, I think I like this side better, honestly. Oh, so pretty. This has been a labor of love. I'll link a couple tutorials down below that I found really helpful. The thing with brioche is that you really just gotta try it <laughs> and frog it and try it and frog it until it really clicks. Stephen West's tutorial was probably the best for me in understanding the anatomy of the stitches, how to read my knitting, I guess. But I encourage you to just watch a bunch of tutorials, swatch as much as you can, try a bunch of different things, and also don't overthink it. Once I figured out how to do the stitches and where to put the stitches, 
I just follow the pattern and then the pattern tells me where to do what stitches as long as I count appropriately. It's very well written even though it's it's still in testing right now. And so now I'm a brioche knitter and I'm so excited. So this design has a brioche panel in the middle and then on either side of the panel are like garter wings for the shawl. The hard part will get done first and then the rest of it should work up really fast. I have officially worked on this for, I think this is, today is day four. So yay, I'm making good progress. I'm trying not to overwork myself now that I've increased and so I'm gonna keep doing the repeat I think I have three more repeats to go, so I'm going to do one repeat a day is kind of my goal, to put in some good time on it, but also not feel too stretched for time. I've got my lifeline here if I need to frog. <laughs> and I'm really proud of myself. Do something hard, stretch yourself, and you'll surprise yourself in what you can accomplish. Like I said, I have some stocks that I started. I am using Olivia and Oliver fibers in the color eggnog. It's beautiful, like really light yellow with some yellow and brown flecks, golden brown flecks. Oh, so yummy. This is the Daily Socks. The Daily Socks by Summer Lee Knits. I am only 10 rows into the legs, so I've got a ways to go. I had the whole leg done the other day and I frogged it because I didn't check my gauge and the sock was a little bit too loose. So now I'm down to my normal size one 2.25 millimeter needle to create this pattern. So super fun, it's the perfect meld of it's almost vanilla, but it's not. And so it's a really mindless pattern to do, but it's not just straight vanilla knitting. And that's really what I needed after working on my apple socks for months <laughs> and having to frog and redo it and whatnot for that. So I'm really enjoying this. This is like my fun knitting when I've taking care of the things that I really need to do and really want to do, like my priority projects. This is my fun project to have on the side. This is my side project, my side whip. And then, oh man, <laughs> I have so many things like all around me just trying to keep track of everything. I will share with you, I have started a pattern from Jeannie Miska's new book, Modern Crochet Sweaters, her Maple Grove cardigan. And I'm using a bunch of stash, my Red Heart Huga Charm yarn. I've got eight different colors. This copy, of this book can be yours. Head over to my Instagram. I'll link it in the description. It's right there at Crochet Creations. And if you're watching this video on Friday when it comes out tomorrow on Saturday, March 12th, I will be drawing a winner from my Instagram. There's a post I posted of a flat lay with this as well as my whip. Comment on that post. Make sure to check it out so you can enter to win the giveaway. Only open to USA because of ridiculous shipping costs anywhere else. It's like 70 bucks to ship it to Canada, which is like not that far away. I'm doing a giveaway on my Instagram, so check it out and make sure to enter right away because I'm drawing a winner on Saturday, which is tomorrow if you're watching this right when this video comes out. I had an extra copy that I was gifted by Page Street Publishing, and since I already had a copy, I figured it'd be fun to give it away. And so, yeah, that's what I'm making it from. This pattern, the Maple Grove cardigan. Ta-da, I have my second color in. So I did the math and you know divided by all my different colors so that I could have even color blocks. I hope that I have enough yarn of each color in order to do even color blocks, but we shall see. This is the back panel, it starts from the back panel. And so I don't have much to go, but this is a really super mindless piece. So this is really nice when my brain is fried, when I'm trying to read, or you know, I've got other things going on, so I can still get some yarn time in even when I want to turn my brain off. So that's been really, really nice to have on hand because there's a lot of crochet to do for that piece since I just started it. And then my very last whip, it's a very baby whip because all I have is a swatch. Ta-da! I swatched in the round, go me. This is using Knit Picks palette in the color Ice Lily beautiful mauvey color and Madeline Tosh impressions yarn in the color new moon that mauve matches so perfectly that you can like can't even see the mohair in some parts which is exactly what I wanted oh, so beautiful so I swatched so that I could order my yarn for it I needed to make sure that this nitpicks yarn was gonna be a good color match 
but also that I could get a good gauge that I enjoyed and I like this so we are gonna go with it I'm gonna make a no frills sweater by petite knit and I'm hoping that with the variegated mohair that it'll be really fun and interesting to see it work up since it's not just a single flat color but I can really watch it come to life so that is also on my make nine it's actually technically not on the make nine in my video but I substituted in the terrazzo sweater also by petite knit because I decided that I don't really like turtlenecks that much so I'll just get the same effect by working on a no frill sweater with my really fun mohair so I'm really excited to work on that but I'm making myself work on my find your fade shawl a bit first before I really d whoa before I really d Mm. my no frill sweater okay so now we're gonna talk about some new fun yarny goodies so I already shared with you I actually didn't specify but the new Woolbury berry home yarn that I got the darling color I just got that in the mail and I cast on right away and I bound off right away and now I have like 30 grams left I'm not sure what to do with it but that is a new acquisition that just came in the mail I also got some other yarn that I've actually been waiting a long time for this is from Explorer knits and fibers and I've been waiting I feel like for so long but I'm so happy that it finally came in that's the hard part about pre-orders is being patient. So I've got, this is both on her Denali sock base, barrel aged sour. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And I was thinking this actually kind of reminds me of my All Too Well socks by Dorella Yarn from her Taylor Swift collection. I'll put up a picture here, but that one definitely has a lot more of a really light purple, creamy colors, and this has more red in it. So it's not as vast of a variation, like tone wise, but the color, oh, so yummy. And then the other yarn I got, I kind of regret this purchase and I'll tell you why. This is Moonstone is the main color and then Untamed is the mini. That is so beautiful. The most beautiful pastel. It's like oh, peach and blue and pink purple is all the pastels it's so beautiful and it's like more colorful in person than it was online like there's just so much dimension to that really really light pastel color is so beautiful my regret is that I almost bought a sweater quantity of this yarn and I felt guilty about spending that money on a sweater quantity and so I just got a sock set and I wish I got a sweater quantity because it's so beautiful, but I am still really excited about the sock set and I'm proud of myself for trying to be better about not buying so much yarn, but I'm really excited about this and I will share that I am looking forward to making, I was thinking a pair of July socks by Laura Moritz. We'll see for sure if that's what I end up doing, but that's what I was thinking. That is also on my make nine list. I'm trying really hard to like stick to my make nine and to work on those projects because they're all things I'm really excited for. And then I got a couple books, magazines, some publications of yarny goodness. So I mentioned Page Street Publishing. I'm one of their ambassadors. And so I get a free book every month and all I have to do is to work on projects through it, promote the book. It's just been really fun. It's fairly low commitment, but it's been so nice to, to support these other makers and to work on their projects and to get these books. I have a, quite a large craft library going on. And if you want to see a tour for my craft library, then definitely let me know in the comments below. And it's so fun to add new books to it. Combine my love of books and reading and my love of crafts and this is another book I recently got from them it's the Nordic knitting primer from Kristen Drisdale of Scandi Works it's really cool that she has an ethnic background and her heritage goes back to the Nordic region and so she ties a lot of her designs into her own family and they're part of the inspiration for her and so it's really cool to see how she's taken her heritage and it's inspired her knitting and so there's some really beautiful motifs oh, this one look at this so beautiful mommy and me set some really beautiful designs it's really hard to choose there's these slippers I think I might end up trying to make those they've got like a Latvian braid which I've never tried before there's some beautiful color work charts <sighs> beautiful color work charts 
some beautiful motifs. I'm really excited. I'm not sure exactly what I'll make in this, but I think it may be, you know, maybe slippers might be a fun thing. Maybe I'll make some for like an early Christmas gift. Wow, look at me on top of things. So I'm kind of thinking about that as a possibility, but this has been really fun. You can see I've bookmarked practically every pattern because I've really enjoyed it and I could see myself making all of them if I have the right yarn. So again, non-super wash wool is really great for color work, especially this style. Let me know if you know of any really good non-super wash wools that you enjoy working with. And then a last new yarn acquisition is Pom Pom Magazine. I got an issue of theirs a few months ago. I got the autumn issue for some research just to learn more about their brand, just to learn more about their publication. So I kind of had different motives, but for this issue, I wanted to get this because I love like every single pattern in this issue. So beautiful, so dreamy and whimsical, so beautiful. Lots of mohair based projects. Like, can you even, this is beautiful. Look at that texture. Look at it, it's so beautiful, look. Oh, I love that shaping of that garment. Oh, these socks, I wanna make these socks. Anyway, so I wanna make like everything in this issue, and so I figured I might as well just buy it. I don't have much mohair just kind of lying around, and so it'll be a little while, I think, before I make something from here, but I'm really excited about it, and I'm, it's just so beautiful and if nothing else it'll be great inspiration for me as a designer and as a maker it's a vibe and I'm here for it so I don't have too many other dreams and plans and things coming up to talk about especially because I feel like I already mentioned a few things you know that I've got my no frill sweater I ordered yarn for that so I'm waiting on that I've got maybe my July socks coming up oh I ordered yarn for my campsite waffle cardigan by Alexandra Tovel of two of wands and so that might be in the works sometime I'm not quite sure because the weather's warming up and it's kind of a heavier project so I don't really know I think I just I kind of feel a little overwhelmed with all the whips going on right now and like none of them are close to being done and so I think I'm just gonna mostly work through what I've got I do really want to start a pair of crochet socks soon 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 so I can really understand more of that kind of construction so let me know if you know of any crochet sock patterns to try I recently finished the Jack and Jill socks by Snowdrop Creates and I would love to try another pair or two of socks before I endeavor to make my own pair that I design. I just want to at least finish one other thing before I start on that and with you know my clovery dishcloth pattern and then I've got the seedling dishcloth set coming up and I've got a sock design, a knit sock design in the works. I'm hoping that I get a chance to collaborate maybe with a yarn dyer but we shall see. So that's still kind of under wraps as I'm trying to figure out if there is a good spot to promote that pattern through before I you know do a tester call and kind of reveal it so keep an eye out for that definitely join my newsletter down below if you want to be notified of any big testing calls like for that and any other big news happening with crochet creations and that's kind of I've, I've just got a lot of things that are in the works and it would be nice to kind of work some things off my list and I definitely look forward to having at least one project. I'm hoping that I can finish the Fortnite shawl before next podcast so I can definitely have it done within the two weeks, even as a new brioche knitter. That is my plan. And other than that, I'm not quite sure. It'll be exciting to see kind of what I get a chance to work on with all these pattern releases and designs coming up too. This is my second time filming this podcast because I filmed it yesterday and I forgot things and my podcast turned out to be like an hour and 15 minutes long which is way too long to edit so I am happy that this is turning out to a more reasonable length of time and I am grateful to have you here for this time I would love to hear from you down in the comments I love talking with you down there so let me know what things you're working on if any of these projects are things you've created already or if you are interested in making them too I would love to hear let me know if there's any patterns that you would recommend for me. I'm always looking for new recommendations and for new designers to follow and interact with. So let me know. I hope that you are doing well and my thoughts and prayers are with those of you who are 
struggling and going through some hard, hard times right now. I hope that making can be a refuge for you, even if just temporarily, as it has been for me. I'll leave these things with you guys, and I wish you all happy making. I'll see you next time. Bye.